Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be hopefully, fingers crossed, the final book haul of the year. Um, if you've watched all my videos this year you know that I put myself on a book buying ban at the start of the year because I've been buying too many books and not reading enough of them and I need to bring that TBR down. Um, I'm not going to get it down to 500. Uh, I'm just hoping to stop buying more than I'm actually reading. July is my birthday month um, so this is the July book haul and I did buy quite a few books because I was given money to spend on books and um, I had some money on a loyalty card and I went on a shopping trip to London as well. Um, but yes, I spent too much money on books this month but what I've done is um, where I had money from the books, they're either next books in a series that I wanted to buy or they are uh, books to replace on my shelves, ones that I got rid of a few years ago that I never should have. So like I say, my birthday's right at the beginning of the month. So I had some birthday money and I had some Amazon vouchers specifically. So my mum and my work colleagues gave me some money to spend on Amazon and I bought four books and these are four books that I previously owned that I never should have got rid of. The first two books are actually by the same author and that is The Colour of Magic and The Light Fantastic, both by Terry Pratchett. I have read these books a few times. Um, I think I actually read them a couple of years ago. I'm doing a Terry Pratchett reread uh, at the moment, um, quite sporadically really, but The Colour of Magic is the first book chronologically in the Discworld series or in the publication order I think and then Light Fantastic was the second. Um, they weren't the first books that I ever read by Terry Pratchett that um, I think the first book I ever read was The Last Continent but the, as I say these are the first two in the publication order um, which is how I want to buy them and they're back in the original covers that I had when I bought them originally and I just wanted them back on my shelves again and I would actually like to replace I had the majority I didn't have all of the series um because at the point that I stopped buying them he was still releasing um but I had the majority of them and I do regret getting, getting rid of them and I'm enjoying rereading them so they are books I would really like to have on my shelf and own paperback copies of um, so I can look at them and hold them and sniff them and, you know, do what you do uh, when you're reading books that you really, really love. So those were the first two purchases. And then I had some money left over from that. So I decided to pick up a couple more books. And again, these are both by the same author. And I'm only going to hold one of them up because one of them is quite chunky. Um, but the first one is Strangers by Dean Koontz. And the second one is Lightning by Dean Koontz. Um, I'm just going to put Strangers down a second. So Lightning was the first book by Dean Koontz that I ever read and I was about 16, 17 at the time and I absolutely loved it and I went on to Strangers, that's why I've got these two because they were the first two that I ever bought and read by him and they got me hooked on his books and for quite a while I read nothing but Dean Koontz. Um, he actually took over from Stephen King um, in my number one author for quite a while. Um, I would read everything he wrote as he released it um, and I thoroughly enjoyed them and I've missed reading his books so I'm actually looking forward to picking up Lightning especially um, because like I say this was the first and I remember some of what it was about but I really want to go back to them because he I never saw things coming in his books and I really enjoyed it they were really good um, thriller and suspense novels and I do recommend because there's also the little bit of the unusual, um, not paranormal, but fantastical, definitely. Um, I think this one involves a little bit of time travel. Um, but looking forward to picking these up. And I'm again, I'm really glad to have these back on my shelves. The 4th of July is my birthday. Um, and if you've seen my previous videos, then you might have seen my vlog that I did on that day where I was in self-isolation so I couldn't do anything that I wanted to do on my birthday we had to postpone it by a week and one of the things I was supposed to do was go book shopping um, with my mum in the nearest Waterstones to me but we had to postpone it so like I say we went a week later 
I had some money from my brother and sister-in-law for my birthday and I had um, some loyalty points on my Waterstones card and I decided that I was going to spend it and I bought four books while I was in there which I thought was fairly restrained three were books I particularly went in there for so I thought that I did really really well but the first book that I bought is Wondersmith, The Calling of Morrigan Crow. And the second book is Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morrigan Crow. These are books two and three in the Morrigan Crow series written by Jessica Townsend. I read book one in June, um, which is Nevermore. Um, you can just see it behind me on the shelf behind my Rubik's Cube. And... I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So these are about a young girl who gets taken to the world of Nevermore and she finds out that she's not what she thought she was. And they, it was a really good adventurous story. I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to picking up book two and book three very, very soon because I want to carry on the story. I want to know what happens to Morrigan Crow. So the third book that I picked up is again a series continuation because of a series that I started in June and that book is Starfell, Willow Moss and the Forgotten Tale. This is book two in the Starfell series. Again book one is up there somewhere but I read that in June, thoroughly enjoyed it. This is about a young girl called Willow Moss who is a witch and her particular power is she can find lost things. So in the first book, um, last Tuesday disappeared and she had to go and try and find it. In this book, she's got to find a forgotten tale. I don't know any more about it than that. Um, I just know that I thoroughly enjoyed Dominic Valente's writing. And the third book is out now, but it's out in hardback. And because I've got the first two in paperback, I'm going to wait until that one's out in paperback to buy it. So there will be one more purchase this year because that comes out later this year. But yes, I um, thoroughly enjoyed it and thoroughly looking forward to getting around to this one. So once I'd gone straight to the middle grade section, the 9 to 12 year old section in Waterstones and picked up those three books, I knew I had a little bit of money left over from what I had to spend. So I had a little bit of a browse to try and find a book that I wanted, um, which I couldn't find. But then when I was queuing to pay at the till, I thought, right, OK, that's fine. You know, I can put the, the, the extra money aside, I can come back later. Um, I saw another book that I thought I would like to read and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a retelling, um, a Greek mythology retelling and it is the retelling of uh, the Battle of Troy, I think. Um, and Greek mythology is something that's always intrigued me but I've never really invested any time in so I thought what better way to start than with a retelling. This is a much beloved book um, all over YouTube so um, it is very very much enjoyed. I actually originally wanted to get a Circe um, but someone has said that Circe can be a bit dry if you're not um, used to Greek mythology, Greek retellings. Um, so, but and Song of Achilles is better, so I thought I would go with this one instead. So again, really want to pick this one up. In fact, my bed is opposite my bookshelf, and every time I open my eyes in the morning, it's drawn straight to the Song of Achilles because it's right in my eye line on the right shelf. Um, so I'm going to um, look forward to picking this one up, and hopefully you'll see it in a reading wrap-up sometime this year. And then in the hottest week of the year, I had my annual leave. Um, I couldn't take the first week of the year because someone else had a few days off that week. So I couldn't, and I was self-isolating anyway, so I wouldn't have been able to go anywhere. Um, but yes, I did then on an impulse book a trip to London because I wanted to go to Waterstones on Piccadilly because Waterstones on Piccadilly is the biggest bookshop in Europe, apparently. Um, so it's only a few hours away from me and I love book shopping so what better way to spend part of my time off than to go to the biggest bookshop in Europe it's certainly the biggest bookshop in London I spent an hour and a half in there um, and that was only looking at the general ground floor section uh, looking at science fiction and fantasy looking at uh, middle grade uh, looking at crime and looking at romantic fiction and that was it. I didn't look at anything else and I was in there for an hour and a half. I could have browsed more. Um, 
I really could have browsed more, but I was then browsing around sections that I don't really have any interest in. I might have picked something else up if I had, but yes, I was getting a bit tired by that point and I wanted to go off and find a drink. Um, and yes, and, and wander around London a little bit because from there I walked down to Oxford Street and I went into Primark because that's what people do. Um, or at least I do anyway. Um, so I went, walked down to Oxford Street, went into Primark, had a good wander around Primark, walked back down to Trafalgar Square and walked around Trafalgar Square, but it was so hot. It was too hot to actually stay there. Um, so I just walked around the outskirts, took a couple of photos and then I went back to um, the coach station uh, to come home again, um, to get something to eat and come home again. But while I was in Waterstones, I did pick up three books. And again, two of them I'm really pleased about because they were books that I owned previously that I would like to read again and one that I would like to keep on my shelves. Um, but the first book that I picked up is Sharp's Tiger by Bernard Cornwell. This is the first book in the Sharp series. Now, people in the UK may know that an actor called Sean Bean, and if you've watched Game of Thrones, you'll know Sean Bean from that, def very definitely. Um, but Sean Bean starred in a TV show um, back in the 90s, uh, which was called Sharp, and it was based around these books. A few years ago now, about... I'm going to say the very early 2010s, late 2000s, early 2010s, I read through the entire Sharp series that was out. I owned them all and again, I got rid of them. Um, I think I got rid of them to hide them from my ex-partner, uh, which should have sent up flags a long, long time ago. But I really enjoyed them. They, um, These books are set during the Napoleonic Wars uh, Sharp starts out as a private um, in the beginning of the series and it takes you through his career and how he works his way up through the ranks and I really enjoyed them at the time they were even though they're about war um, and there's romance in them a little bit um, they they were really good fun reads for me um, at the time I was reading a lot of heavy fiction so yes it must be pre-2010s because I was reading a lot of fantasy um and yeah these were good light reads between all the fantasy novels I think so and it was pre-romance era for me so really enjoyed it and when I saw it on the shelf I was just like you know what I want to give these books another go I want to reread them and I think they're ones that actually my mum would read and enjoy as well so really looking forward to picking this one up um again Hopefully soon, if not, my mum will um, at some point because she's quite interested in reading them because she really enjoyed the TV series when it was on back in the 90s. The next book that I picked up is an old favourite. Um, it's one that I used to have on my shelves or I didn't have on my shelves. It used to be on my mum's shelf. She had it in hardback. I read it as a teen um, and somehow or another... Her copy has disappeared. We don't remember whether she voluntarily got rid of it or whether somehow or another it's been lent out and been lost. We just don't really know. But I wanted a copy for my own shelves because I really, really enjoyed it. It is one of my all-time favourites. And that book is The Magic Cottage by James Herbert. This is about a couple who are driving in the New Forest one day and they come across a cottage... Um, a beautiful little cottage that is up for sale and they fall in love with it and they decide to buy it and move in and from there lots of strange things start happening um it also deals with the occult there is a cult um, who have taken over a large property nearby and uh one of the couple gets sucked in by it and it's about all the spooky things that happen from there so I really love this book. Every time I read it, um, I'm taken by surprise by some of the things that happens. It doesn't scare me. Um, it is, from, to me, it is more suspense. But yes, um, it, it does take me by surprise. And it's one that I've read a few times. Um, like I said, I read my mum's copy over and over and over. And I've got a copy on my Kindle. But I really wanted a copy for my shelves. And I just love this cover as well. I think it's gorgeous. My mum had actually lost the dust cover for the hard copy that she had. I think she might have picked it up in charity shop um, years and years and years ago. 
but yes uh, as soon as i saw it i had to pick it up um of all the james herbert books i've read and i've read a few this one is stand out my favorite um the only other books that really stand out to me of his that i've read are the series that he wrote about um carnivorous rats and the first book is called the rats and i don't recommend that one uh because that one is very gory and a bit horror-ish um i read i tried to read them in quick succession rats lair and domain i tried to read them in quick succession and i got to domain and i read the first few chapters and i put it down and never went back to it because i'd had enough of the story so yes definitely definitely glad to have this one back on my shelves and again it's probably a copy that's going to get read very very soon so like i say any purchases uh, that were made were complete and utter impulse buys so this third one was a complete cover buy um i saw it adored the cover read the blurb walked away from it at first um and then went and did some more browsing because I was like, I'm really not sure if I'm going to pick this up or not. Uh, but yes, I had to um, just pick it up in the end. And that book is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. And I think this cover is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the prettiest covers I think I have. I mean, and it's very, very simple as well. But this is another Greek retelling. So there's a bit of a theme going on here. This is the retelling of Ariadne and Theseus um, and what, what happens when Theseus comes to slay the Minotaur and they fall in love. I'm really looking forward to it. I've um, especially been um, intrigued by the story of the Minotaur anyway because one of my all-time favourite books is Rose Matter by Stephen King and this book actually features the Minotaur and is a bit Greek in its, re although it's not a Greek retelling. Um, it features that element in there um, so I've always been a bit intrigued by that one so when I saw that that was what this one is about although I think it's more surrounding Ariadne and Theseus I had to pick it up and again I can see it on my shelves I mean with the the gorgeous gorgeous spine it just stands out so much on my shelves compared to the rest um, but yeah I don't think it's going to be long before I pick this one up and start reading it so those were all the books that I bought for my birthday this year. Uh, so money, special trips for me. Um, and that was everything I bought. Like I say, hopefully, fingers crossed, that is it. There'll be no more book hauls this year. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to fill my channel with for the rest of the year. <laughs> I'll try and find something. But I've really, really enjoyed um, buying these books. Again, they're books that, most of them are books that I haven't had on my shelves for a while and wanted to replace or they're ones that I'm really really excited to continue with um, and should hopefully be continuing with very very soon so I think I did really really well there to be quite restrained 11 books not bad for an entire month I mean that's there was what four or five weeks in the month that's not even two books a week so I think I did really really well because at my height of my book buying I was buying two books a day let alone two books a week um so i think i've done really really well um and yeah i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video then please give me a like and if you haven't already then please do subscribe i would love to have you here on my channel and i make videos every monday they go up at 6 30 p.m uk time and i will see you all again in the next one bye